the world is so upside down and the disinformation is so high and the propaganda and public relations is so strong that we've gotten Americans to give up their God-given inalienable rights that we've allowed Satanists that's right Satanists to to compare the Ten Commandments to whatever interactive program they wish to set can you believe this ladies and gentlemen Satan worshippers are seeking to build their own monument at the state capitol and Lucian Greaves a spokesman for the Satanic Temple said he's optimistic it'll be approved I really don't see a grounds which they can reject us he told ABC News the privately funded Ten Commandments monument was approved by the conservative-led Oklahoma State Legislature in 2009. But Greaves does not see a problem with the Christian monument, so long as it does not stand alone. Okay, Christian monument. The Ten Commandments is not a Christian monument. Okay? The Ten Commandments is a Judeo-Christian monument. What they're doing here is once again trying to twist everything. Make evil good, and good evil, in the minds of men, and women, and children. It is the worst kind of propagandized mind control that there is. To compare whatever interactive program for children they're seeking to put, as opposed to the Ten Commandments, could be what? Could be what? Multiple sex partners, uh, you know, uh, bestiality. Um, you know, pedophilia. These are all satanic evil principles. Why not indoctrinate the, the, the world to these principles? And if, if you don't think that that's happening, it is. It won't be long. Bestiality is already legal in Germany, and there's provisions to, have, to bring it legal here in this country. It, it's, un, it's sickening that this could be even considered. And there are pedophiles lobbying for the right to be pedophiles. So they'll use their rights to gain a collective effort, but they'll attack your individual rights. This is what's going on. I mean, look at this. You have Mandela is being, is being lionized. Mandela, a communist. And then Obama shaking hands with another communist, legitimizing communism. It's time for us all to get together. Come together. Well, coming together under the principle of collectivism and communism, taking the wealth from those that have it, giving it to the many that don't, has been proven to be, to end up just being another type of oligarchy, because all the power goes to the top, and all the people at the bottom are spread upon shekels, so they're living in, in poverty as anyway. It takes away the ability to bring yourself up the ladder. And they're trying to lie to the people and, and, and influence them to think that that's what they need to do. Common core education. Train good workers. Don't train entrepreneurs. Don't train them in business management. Don't train them in how to, how to create their own business. Don't, don't give opportunities for people to start businesses. Don't let the Small Business Administration help a, an individual to try to make a small business loan without having to jump through hurdles. You know, make it really difficult for the average person to go into business for themselves so they work for the, for the Borg. That's the truth. That's what's happening. They're taking away our individual right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And don't tread on me. I don't want Obamacare. I don't want the government looking at me. I don't want the NSA spying on me as they're doing this exact moment. I don't want the government in my pocket. If the government was out of everybody's pocket, we'd all be flourishing. Now, do you understand why this is happening? Because this is not just happening here. It is a worldwide movement for a one-world totalitarian socialist government through the United Nations, uh, in Agenda 21, sustainable development. All of these programs are designed to enslave us. And we have been bamboozled and fooled to be praising Mandela, who is a communist. Nelson Mandela was not only a communist, but he was a terrorist who ordered terrorist attacks from his jail cell. In fact, up until 2008, he was on the terrorist watch list. They don't report this on the news, so you're not aware of it. But it's the truth.
He's part of the club, ladies and gentlemen. Part of the New World Order, One World, Totalitarian, Socialist Club. Who ended apartheid to bring in a communist regime. That they're all happy, that now they're, the slaves now are serfs, so they have a few things. They, they're, 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 in, they're embracing their servitude, like Aldous Huxley stated. The tyranny is still there. Who do you think still runs the show? The communists in South Africa. Well, who runs the communists? Who funds the communists? Where do they get their money? The state get their money from? They get their money, for the most part, from the tax-exempt foundations. Namely, at this point, the Mandela Rhodes Foundation. That's right, Cecil Rhodes. Same foundation. Or a little branch of it. They threw, a, they threw him a crumb. And the Clinton Global Initiative. And all the other high-funded tax-exempt foundations that promote communism, collectivism, and a new world order. I stand here before you not as a prophet, but as a humble servant of you, the people, a place the remaining years of my life in your hands. After leading negotiations for a new South Africa, Nelson Mandela cast his vote in the first free and democratic elections and became the country's first black president. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. And notice how this BBC twit has to uh, include the right-wing farmer in his discussion. And of course, don't forget that that's not of the majority feeling in South Africa. ...democratic elections in 1994. An active participant in trying to derail those negotiations was Eddie von Maltitz, a right-wing farmer from the Free State in South Africa. His views are by no means the views of all farmers, but in this, the second of a series of three reports, we look at how this particular farmer, 15 years later, views the changes in South Africa and the role that Nelson Mandela played. My name is Eddie von Maltitz. I'm a farmer from the Free State farming in Fixburg and my granddad built this farm since 1872. My dad farmed here, I farmed here and we're very proud to be farmers in Africa. My life since Mr. Nelson Mandela's been freed, it's just changed a hundred percent for the worse. We're very glad we freed this guy. We let him out. He didn't, we were never vanquished in the war. We came out of our good of our heart and said, Mr. Mandela, you want freedom? Here it is, take it. And since then I've been absolutely disgusted. He hasn't delivered. He has really created chaos in my country and I wish the country would come right. I believe everybody's got poorer. I believe everybody has no more hope, especially my black people. Yes, I know why they speak to me all the time, they're desperate. Yes, yes. I think he wanted prosperity yes, for nice all. Welcome. Now I see a few fat yes. cats, maybe 20 or 30,000, yes. all sitting with 1 million or yes, 2 million rand in the bank. And I just see my farmers, yes. my neighbors, all of them want to leave. Yes. I mean, you would also. It is said you can judge a man's character by his associations. Well, let's take a look at Mandela's associations. Hobnobbing with Fidel Castro, Yasser Arafat, Al Gore, and the global warming fraud, the Agenda 21 protocols, and of course, Rhodes Scholar William Jefferson Clinton. Did I mention the Mandela Rhodes Foundation? Hmm. Welcome to the New World Order, ladies and gentlemen. It's right in front of your face. All you need to do is open your eyes and see the truth. There is one strange fact concerning prisoner 46664. And of course, not sounding like a conspiracy theorist, the fact that his number is 4666 
four indicating four six six was his prisoner number in the year 1964 that he was imprisoned but the universe works in strange ways ladies and gentlemen revealing strange truths and the irony is that it is really four six 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 four four triple six four I mean this is just outrageous outrageous circumstances ladies and gentlemen I mean we have Obama greets Cuban strongman with a handshake I mean call him a Cuban strongman as if you know we are are are, uh, are not in bed with these people you know it, it's just outrageous you have Jay-Z going there they slap him on the wrist he gets special order so that he can go to Cuba with Beyonce these communists and now Obama greets Cuban strongman with a handshake Castro he's shaking hands with Raul Castro and CNN is defending him saying that it's not to be misunderstood well it is not misunderstood he is a communist embracing communists and trying to make it that it's politically correct it's time to to it's time for us to all come together well communists the only good communist honestly is a dead communist and if you don't understand that you too shall be enslaved uh, Carter says hope it will be an omen for the future oh my god President Carter says hope it will be an omen for the future well, let me tell you remember the omen that's the omen okay there we are. It will be an omen for the future that he's shaking hands with Castro. That's right. A deadly omen. And the most cutting and stark truth is that our great allies of the Middle East, the state of Israel, conducts an apartheid against the Palestinian people while they pray for peace in the region. The Zionists created the state of Israel. The plan was concocted in the late 19th century and confirmed via the Balfour Declaration of 1917. For this exact purpose of having constant conflict in the Middle East and where it would lead to a war between the Arabs and the Jews, the Third World War, as stated in a letter to Mazzini, written by Albert Pike, a letter to Giuseppe Mazzini, founder of the Mafia, Illuminati, 33rd degree Freemason, in 1871. A deadly omen. Because it's absolutely unbelievable. Castro's regime sponsors terrorism abroad and against their own people. Mark Rubio came out on that, on Drudge. But that's right, I mean, this is Obama. This is what he's doing. He's embraced. He is a Marxist socialist. He is extreme. He's been groomed through the Council on Foreign Relations and all of his CIA connections and all of his fabrications. He was born in Kenya. He is, he is an illegitimate president. He's a usurper. Buying into the whole lie. But it truly is. Look what's going on in the world. It's just unbelievable. Greenpeace is warning about global warming. Again, you have the controlled opposition, the people that are opposed to everything, opposed to pollution. They put their agenda in. Global warming is the goal to get everyone to buy into that fraud and that lie. Uh, it's just outrageous what's been going on. Um, and again, we have this whole thing that Obama criticized for ignoring African human rights. And it is true because he does. He, he ignores this whole thing. And like I said, we're dealing with a communist that's being praised and all of these Marxists like Bill Clinton and Hillary have to go in the tent.